And as this, these long lasting antidepressant effects, at least in animals, how dependent is that on dose? What, what is the comparable human dose that, that you're using for these rats? Is it, is it a very large one or? It's, we roughly calculated it to be around what they're using in the human, uh, the human trials for the, the effects that it's having on, on the rat. Uh, the dose that we've chosen is not such a large dose that it's incapacitated. It can't do anything. Mm-hmm. Um, it's still what, able. What do they do when you get <laughs> a, a rat psilocybin? What what do they do? It's it's kind of funny. They they kind of hang out in their cage. They have this behavior called ptosis, uh, which is serotonin receptor mediated. So their eyes are kind of half closed like this, <laughs> and they like to hang out at the back of the cage where the, the air vent is coming in and they'll just prop their chin up there, kind of looking a little sleepy. So it's really easy to tell uh, which ones we've, we've given the drug to. And sometimes uh, another behavior is a shake. So they'll have like a wet dog shake, but we don't see that very often in the rats, more, more so in the mice. Okay, so it, it clearly has a behavioral effect. Oh yeah, yeah. And um, I guess one thing that's interesting too is how you know, you always wonder about how the effects that you have in a human translate mm-hmm. to an animal and vice versa. And if you've got a lot of, a lot of these psychedelic effects mediated by receptors that are in places like the prefrontal cortex, as you mm-hmm. said, um, do in animals, do they have the same distribution of 5-HT2A receptors or, or do we think there might be effects that are a little more unique to humans just based on the size of our cortex and, and differences like yeah. that? I think I think both of those are 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 valid. That uh, anatomical studies looking at receptor localization in rodents versus human is very very similar distribution mm-hmm. in the same types of neurons. Um, there's a, actually there's a larger difference between mice and rats than rats and humans hmm. in how the, the the sort of responses to specific psychedelics are. Uh, in in rats, if uh, you give them uh, tryptamine, psilocybin, and ergoline, uh, just about all of the behavior is shown to be 2A receptor mediated. Um, if you give the same drugs to a mouse, about half of the behavior is 2A and the other half is from 1A. And you also have uh, metabolic effects to take into account that a mouse, it's used to eating garbage and metabolizing mm-hmm. things really quickly, more so I think than a rat. So uh, LSD and psilocybin in a mouse are gone within, you know, the half-life is under 10 minutes. Oh, wow. So they're very rapidly metabolized away. Uh, whereas in a rat, they're hanging around for an hour, two hours. In a human though, if, especially with LSD, yeah. you have a very long half-life. It's hanging around much longer. So it's activating the receptors much longer and in humans compared to mice and rats, we have this very large neocortex, mm-hmm. uh, comparatively large. And so we've got just a higher, a higher degree of um, higher uh, proportion of brain tissue for cognitive function than, than rodents do that's highly expressing these receptors where the drug just happens to act much longer. So I think mm-hmm. um, in humans, there are some unique properties about humans, uh, but I think we can study the fundamental network activity, molecular and, and pharmacological activities in, in rats fairly well. Um, mice, okay. Um, there's, there's good genetic models in mice, uh, like a knockout for the receptors, so we can mm-hmm. do some, some fancy things, but there's not any genetic tools in the rat yet. Got it. 